Big day around here tomorrow. Mom and Dad's 15th wedding anniversary. Theater Arts Magazine is doing a feature. The ideal stage marriage. Oh, when Mom was on the stage, she was a real dream puss. Like Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Don't be silly. You know, our maid Frankie says that Mom made Marilyn Monroe look like little Annie Rooney. <laughs> look. I better get down now and see how she's making out with the interview. See ya. You may tell your readers that since my marriage, I've... Are you ready? Since my marriage, I've been supremely happy. Life with Ted has been one gay, big, lovely world. Here, far from the make-believe of Broadway, I found true happiness with my adorable little husband and my dear little daughter and my beautiful home and my heavenly garden. And Frankie, am I laying it on too thick? <laughs> if you were shucking corn, there wouldn't be a kernel left on the cob. <laughs> oh, they'll be here at two tomorrow, huh? Uh huh? I hope they send a man. Hi, Dream Puss. Hi, you dear little daughter. They're gonna take pictures tomorrow. I'll wear my riding outfit. You wear your blue dress. I don't want my public to think I gave birth to a jockey. Don't worry. I'll be a picture of girlish innocence. That was Mr. Preston's office. He'll be late again tonight. Working late again? It's been every night this week. 11, 12 o'clock. Never used to work nights when we were first married. <laughs> of course. It's only natural. He's practically running the bank now. Busy all the time. Just so many hours in the day, you know. It's not his fault. Poor little dear. I'll kill him. That's what I'll do. I'll kill him. <laughs> that way you'll always know where he is. <laughs> it's the old, old story. He's tired of me. Fifteen years. Disenchanted. The magic's gone out of our marriage. Next thing you know, he'll be looking for greener lawns. Pastures. <laughs> and Mr. Preston's not the looking type. He's a banker, not an actor. They're all the same. They just wear different colored suits. <laughs> oh, I should have seen it coming. It's my fault. What did he marry? An actress with all the glamour of the theater. The first time he saw me was in Panama Hattie. I came out on the stage like this. And blop, he fell right out of a six-dollar seat. But what's he got now? A little something from house and garden. Chubby little petunia plucker. <laughs> Frankie, you know what I'm going to do? Go like this again? Yes! I'm going to give him what they whistled at in Panama Hattie. <laughs> now... When Ted gets home, we're going to have a, a late supper by the fire. Soft lights, music, his favorite dish, chicken tetrazzini, champagne, the full treatment. Yes, madame. I'm going to tell him to come home early. Anything else, madame? <laughs> yes, Frankie. Ice my slipper in case he'd like to drink champagne all night. <laughs> champagne and chicken tetrazzini. I suppose I won't be wanted underfoot. Probably have to spend the whole evening huddled alone in my cold, bare little room. You know something, you're getting to be a bigger ham than your mother. Pinky, what's mother up to? Ellen, remember out at the stable when they put the young fillies out to pasture and Gypsy Boy tried to jump the fence? 
Yeah. Well, your mother's just lowering the old top rail a few notches. <laughs> Preston, please. Hello, Ted. I was wondering if you could come home early tonight. Nope. Nothing special plans. Oh, I shouldn't be too late tonight, dear. Huey Duckworth is here working with me right now, and we'll try and get finished up early. Yes, I do too, dear. No, no, I haven't regretted a single second of it either. Why, yes, of course, darling, till the very end of time. Would you mind if I hang up now? Our love life is infringing on a Federal Reserve report. <laughs> yes. 15th anniversary. Of course. Say, Tenor. Yes, Huey. Afraid I can't stick with you on this paperwork tonight. Oh? Devoting my evening to the Mallory Trust. I wish we could land that account. Are you still having trouble with the lawyers? Of course. Took your advice, Tenor, and bypassed the barristers. Went right to the Queen Bee herself, Miss Henrietta Mallory. Dining together this evening. Oh? I thought we'd go to the Chanticleer, oil the financial wheels with a little capon, Victor Hugo, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Huey, I happen to have an account at the Chanticleer. Now, why don't you just use my card and sign my name? Wonderful. Hate to stick you with all this work. No, you're tired. I mean, an extra hour's work for me tonight, Huey, but Joan has nothing special planned. <laughs> Be upset, so though, when I get in too late. I have the same problem at home myself. Anytime I get in after midnight, there's mother waiting up for me with a glass of hot milk. <laughs> you know it's 10 o'clock. I've heated that chicken tetrazzini so much there's no juice left in it. I know just how it feels. <laughs> I wonder what happened to him. Ted! Lights! Music! <laughs> Love face, you're home! Lady, can I use your phone? The rear end just fell out of my car. <laughs> hey, it's him! Huh? Oh, at last! Lights! <laughs> full of late shoppers, it was awful. <laughs> I'm sorry I got you out of bed. You didn't. Like it. Mm-hmm. Joan. Yes, my love. Is there any bicarbonate in the bathroom? <laughs> well, what's all this? I fixed a late supper for us by the fire. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I already ate. You ate? Yes, you know one of those fellows coming through the train? <laughs> I bought a bologna sandwich. Bologna <laughs> sandwich, huh? Well, it was either that or a travel-worn candy dare for. <laughs> yeah, I go right upstairs to bed. Good night, dear. Good night. Ted. Well, what's the matter? Our GIs get better kisses than that from French generals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exhausted. What's with a romantic evening? Frankie, I'm dead. Or he is. <laughs> is he still 
still sleeping? Uh-huh. What do you think's wrong with him? Oh, I don't know. I guess he's reached the age where he doesn't care for uh, chicken tetrazzini. <laughs> well, maybe I was right about it. Now, who could that be this early? Yes? I am busboy at Santa Clara Restaurant, Charles Street. I have your pocketbook for Mrs. Preston. Pocketbook? Yes. Miss Preston leave it in restaurant when she eat there with Mr. Preston. Last night. Last night? I find in booth. Both say very expensive. Trace through the new check signed Mr. Theodore Preston. Both say important customer. Oh. Bring right back. There must be some mistake. <coughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Get some change, Frankie. Thank you. No, 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 thank you. Oh, but how about your car fare? Old piece of restaurant. Bye, lady. Bye, lady. <laughs> He was at the Chanticleer last night. And I don't think it was for a bologna sandwich. <laughs> It's like that Noel Coward play, remember? The wife does nothing foolish or impulsive. She just sits quietly and waits till her husband comes to her with an explanation. And uh, what will we do while you're waiting? Open the bag and get a line on this owl. You can always tell what a woman's like by what she carries in her purse. <laughs> Forbidden? That stuff's twelve dollars an ounce. Man trap red. <laughs> Smelling salts. Smelling salts. Needle and thread. This kid's ready for anything. Real diamonds. Real diamonds. Gold matchbox. Well, she's not a campfire girl, that's for sure. How do you like his timing? On our 15th wedding anniversary. Brand new. Sheffield's, no less. I'm going to find out who this is. How can you do that? You don't know her name, her address, anything. About... Hello, Sheffield's. Bag department, please. You'll get nothing out of them. That's the stuffiest store in Boston. <laughs> Hello, honey. A few days ago, I bought an evening bag there. Mm -hmm. It was a white beaded bag with a gold clasp, and it was made by Fontaine of Paris. Oh, you remember selling it to me. Good. Well, honey, what's my name? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this isn't a quiz program. I usually know my name, but not today. So would you be a love and tell me who I am? This'll never work. <laughs> well, you, you see, it's like this. I'm, um, I'm an amnesia victim, and I, I have a little quirk. Here, I run around buying bags under assumed names and, uh, well, when the bill comes in for this bag, I want to know whether it was me or not. You see, I'd hate to go paying bills and find out I was a total stranger. <laughs> She's gone for the sales slip. Sure she didn't go for a net? Oh, thank you, pet. Thank you so much. Now, honey, would you tell me my address? I'm lost and I want to go home. <laughs> Good. You're a dream, girl. My name's Henrietta Mallory. I live at 327 Beacon Street, and I'm about to have an early caller. <laughs> but you just can't go barging in on Beacon Street. Oh, Boston Biddy's going to steal my guy. But she's one of the Mallorys. They've never done this sort of thing. Why does she have to break training with my husband? Frankie. Don't let Ellen get wind of this. She's so emotional. <laughs> How long have you been here? Just a little Filipino with the pocketbook. Oh, just a little Filipino with a pocketbook. Now, go have your breakfast. But what did he want? He wanted to, he wanted to know why we didn't give him their independence. Now, Mother's busy. Go have your breakfast. We gave the Philippines their independence ten years ago. He was an old Filipino. Now, go have your breakfast. <laughs> Kathy, I won't be
won't be able to go riding today. No. I have to go to Beacon Street to break up a romance. Yes. Between my father and another woman. Mother? Oh, don't be silly. She couldn't handle this. She's much too emotional. <laughs> Good morning, Frankie. Good morning. Ha! And, uh, where is my charming wife? Out. Ellen? Gone. Preston residence. Mr. Preston, it's for you. Thank you. A man, Mr. Duckworth. I wonder if she sneaks a little nip now and then. <laughs> Hello, Huey. Just got a call from Henrietta Mallory. Seems the old girl left her evening bag when she and I dined last night at the Chanticleer. Well, I phoned the restaurant. They informed me they delivered it out to your place. Evening bag? No, I don't know anything about any... Well, there is an evening bag here, Huey, and it doesn't belong to Joan, I know. It must be it. There's a diamond watch in there, quite concerned about it. Well, if it's that important, I'll stop by on the way in and drop it off at Miss Mallory's. <laughs> of course, Henrietta, it's none of my business, but transferring the Mallory estate to another bank. <gasps> Your grandfather will roll over in his grave. <laughs> well, grandfather rolled over in his grave when my sister married that person from Ohio. <laughs> You just have to roll right back again. <laughs> and that'll be all, Wilson. I'm uh, very much impressed with Mr. Duckworth. Oh? <laughs> Such a gay, friendly bachelor. Something so, so reassuring about a man who doesn't wear padding in his dinner jacket. <laughs> well, you should be careful. Nowadays, there are all sorts of people. <laughs> uh, there's a strange child here to see you. I don't know any strange children. What does she want? She wouldn't say, but she insisted Miss on... Mallory! <laughs> yes, I, I'm Miss Mallory. Uh, what can I do for you? Uh, child? Well, I've come to ask you to give up my daddy. <laughs> daddy? Well, I never... Oh, dear. He probably never told you, but I have five sisters. Five little sisters, <laughs> and we're very poor. Oh, dear. Miss Mallory, you have, you have all this. Give us back our daddy! <laughs> <laughs> Will you please show this child out? I think you'd better go now, miss. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, you old Lorelei. <laughs> oh, dear. dear me. I don't understand it. It is peculiar. A perfectly strange child barging in here and accusing you like that. I, children never behaved that way when I was a girl. It must be television. <laughs> Lorelei. Why, they were some sort of mythological creatures, weren't they? Women who... Lured sailors to their doom. <laughs> Why, I never knew a sailor in my life. Except grandfather. <laughs> strange. Very strange. Hmm. Well, well, I must run now, Henrietta. Oh. <laughs> my good woman, you can't just break in here like this. Out of my way, Junior, out of my way. Oh, well, I'm really not as late as I thought. <laughs> you, me? You storm. Oh, really, I... Uh, 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 Henrietta, I believe this woman wants you. <laughs> so you're Henrietta Mallory? Yes. Miss Henrietta, family came over on the Mayflower, Cubfish Millions Mallory. <laughs> I am she. See here now. You? You are Man Trap Red? <laughs> really, I, I don't know what it is, but you must own an awful lot of shrimp boats. <laughs> are you? I am Mrs. Theodore Preston, wife of Mr. Theodore Preston. Preston? I don't know any Theodore Preston. You didn't dine last night with him at the Chanticleer? I had dinner at the Chanticleer with a, with a business acquaintance, but I assure you it was not your husband. Dear. 
I've made an awful mistake. Oh, of course you have. <laughs> I'm not the type of woman that goes around stealing other women's husbands. Oh. <laughs> After all, I was a Vassar girl. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm just terribly sorry. I, I don't know what you must think of me barging in like this. Oh, it's quite all right. <laughs> After all, it does have its humorous aspect. Yes. <laughs> but my dear, I assure you, I don't know any Theodore Preston. Why, I never even heard of Theodore uh. Preston. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Mallory. Mr. Preston is here to see you. <laughs> you almost had me fooled. Miss Cutfish, you are put that act on the road. Miss Mallory, I brought you... Joe! <laughs> what are you doing here? What am I doing? I suppose you're here for a meeting of the D.A.R. <laughs> oh, they must be New Yorkers. <laughs> well, I'm sure they'll be here. They knew the interview was set for 2 o'clock. There isn't anything wrong, is there? Wrong? <laughs> it's happened before. Theater Arts sent us out to Hollywood last month to do a feature on Moviedom's Happiest Couple. They separated while we were changing planes in Chicago. No, it's nothing like that. Why, they're, they're crazy. They're crazy about each other. She's the devoted wife, and he's the adoring husband. And the, and the daughter, so sweet and unaffected. Sweet, unaffected daughter. Well, she's high strung too. <laughs> Let's see what's going on. <laughs> the devoted wife. <laughs> The adoring husband. <laughs> no, this is ridiculous. Will you give me a chance to explain? This is our wedding anniversary, the 15th. Why didn't you think of that last night? <laughs> I was busy last night. I know. Out with the Sloan's liniment set. <laughs> Joan. Oh, I've read books about men like you, but I never thought I'd marry one. Joan. Ah! Why, it's me. The next step. For heaven's sake, Joan! The people are waiting to do the ideal marriage interview. We'll get to them when we're finished fighting. <laughs> what a madhouse! Well, at least we didn't go all the way to Chicago. <laughs> Tell Ellen we're leaving forever and ever. And the next time I hear of Boston, I hope it's on a can of baked beans. <laughs> Who gets custody of me? <laughs> Hello. Oh, Huey. Is Ted there? I'm afraid we're in for some trouble on the Mallory account. I'll call him. <laughs> Mallory account? Yes, I just came from the Mallory mansion. The old girl accused me of all sorts of ribble carryings on. I can't understand it. We got along famously last night at the Chanticleer. Tell Ted the bad news, will you? Happy anniversary. <laughs> Thanks. I'll tell her. And just what are you doing now? Unpacking. I thought that you were leaving. No, Ted. I'm going to stick by you, no matter what you've done. I don't want you to stick by me, no matter what I've done. <laughs> I know you're wicked, foolish, but someone must be strong. Of course, things will never be the same between us, but the world will never know. I'll keep up the pretense. Well, I can't let you do this. There's no telling how far this weakness of mine will go. <laughs> you know, someday I might bring disgrace upon you. They picked up by the police for loitering behind the old lady's home. <laughs> 
I'll get you a cab. Oh, no, Ted, I can't leave you. I'll be your anchor in a sea of trouble. I'm afraid, Joan, that this is anchors away. <laughs> I can't leave you, I can't. Go ahead, force yourself. You love Reno at this time of the year, of course. It's not Boston, but then, what is? Oh, Ted, think of our home, our Ellen, our 15 years. The woman from theater arts wants to know if you finished with the phone. You forgot to hang it up in Ellen's room after Mr. Duckworth called. <laughs> you were throwing me out in the streets. And how about you with your anchor to the windward? Oh, you silly little banker. You emotional actress. The interview? Oh, my gosh. No, it didn't work out. We're just leaving. Well, up till now, it's been like covering the Boston Massacre. <laughs> I'll call you back. Oh, I'm so terribly sorry to have detained you. You know my dear little husband, don't you? Uh, how do you do? It's a great pleasure. And you may tell your readers, are you ready? <laughs> Life with Ted has been one big, gay, lovely world. No, Kathy, just when it was getting good, the other woman turned out to be a false alarm. I'm in my room. They're downstairs with Tchaikovsky. <laughs> what? Frankie? Oh, she's in the kitchen heating up the chicken tetrazzini. <laughs> Corny? I think it's cute having the only parents in town that still smooch. <laughs>